Let's get our next panel up here and talk about sports and media and see if we can get some conclusions we can draw about the near term and the slightly long term. Guys, where are you? Here we go. Tiki Barber and, <laughs> and Will Strickland is going to take it through. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as indicated, we're going to speak a little bit about sports media, brands, and fans. Uh, my name is Bill Strickland. I've represented professional athletes as an attorney and agent for 28 years. Uh, to my left is a former client of mine, Charles Smith, who's an all-star, uh, former all-star forward with the Los Angeles Clippers and the New York Knicks, and he's also holder of several prominent patents in the area of um, digital content management. And to his left is Tiki Barber, the former All-Pro running back with the New York Knicks. I mean, uh, New York Giants, I'm sorry. I've got basketball on my mind, you know how that goes. Uh, and we're gonna get right to it. Um, fellas, you both have made successful transitions from pro sports into being entrepreneurs and CEOs. To what extent and how did playing in sports shaped that transition and to, and to what degree did new media play a role in that transition? Well, I could never palm a basketball, so I couldn't, I couldn't dunk even though I could That's jump. So I, I appreciate the association with the Knicks. Um, I did a couple of things post-retirement. I started in media, uh, working at NBC. It's a, it's a career that I crafted for five or six, maybe seven years uh, prior to my retirement. And, and now I've kind of gone into what I was educationally uh, uh, learned to do, which was uh, the internet. Um, I was an MIS major at the University of Virginia, uh, database design and programming. And so now that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, I tried to get into this space and I wanted to tie uh, exactly what I had done for most of my professional life uh, in, this, in the new emerging e-commerce space. And so I started a company called Thusio.com. Uh, which is an interesting interactive environment, marketplace, you should say, for athletes to engage and book local appearances with consumers. And while it's, why it's innovative is because the consumer has never had the opportunity to book directly with an athlete. Currently, they have to go through an agent or if they know the person or they go through a team or whatever it may be. Uh, and there are a lot of challenges that come with this. One, being the consumer doesn't know that he can interact with an athlete in this way. And two, we have to convince our talent, uh, starting with athletics, eventually moving outside of that, uh, that this is a valuable uh, resource for them to continue to monetize a brand that they've spent years, probably their entire lives, developing. Uh, and so we're, we're in a nascent early stages and we're excited about where we're going. But the challenges that we see uh, in, our, in my business are the same challenges that I always face as an athlete. Finding the right team to put together, finding uh, the way to, to build the right game plan and be successful. Um, and I think social media has started to play a big, for, uh, 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 a big component in how we're going to be successful. Yes, my, uh, my transition from uh, professional basketball was pretty interesting. Um, my last few years, I was in San Antonio with the Spurs, and uh, I ran into uh, a gentleman by the name of Percy Sutton, who has uh, passed uh, as of late. And um, I did biz business development for a company back then called Xbine. Uh, I don't know if from, some of you are familiar with uh, late 90s Sprint, AT&T. They were using ATM networks for transport of video and using the internet IP for protocol. Uh, Sprint had a network they were trying to develop called Xbine. During that time, I found myself in meetings with uh, uh, Paul Lockator when he was at Bell Atlantic and uh, Michael Armstrong at AT&T. It was a very exciting time for me early on. Uh, while they were talking about networking, I was dealing with applications. And uh, uh, as I met and sat with all the application developers, uh, we began to talk about um, the applications that would ride these uh, pipes in the future. Uh, really eating up the bandwidth to generate revenue models. And uh, I since developed uh, customizable applications for video ingestion uh, during that time, and um, that was my transition. I found that very exciting time, and uh, it was exciting enough for me to step away from the game maybe a year or two earlier to devote my time to that business, and uh, uh, hindsight, it was a, a wise move. I, I, I've seen uh, in, in the representation that a lot of a lot of guys, particularly now with the new media coming out, becoming more, um, 
I would like to say sophisticated, although some of the tweets suggest otherwise, and we'll talk about that secondly, uh, of trying to make this transition and, and, and also trying to understand how to monetize new media. What are, your, what are your thoughts in that respect? What kind of opportunities there? Because really what we have, folks, as you can fully appreciate, you have teams as a brand, you have players as a brand, you've got the leagues as a brand, you've got the broadcast networks as a brand, everybody's branding, and there are times when you can act in concert. But obviously there are times, as we see with some of the missteps, where they're in conflict. And players will be quick to tell you, and here's two, they will tell you that the players are the game, not the other way around. So who's going to win that conflict? How do, how do you best manage that conflict? Um, well, when it, when it comes to uh, monetizing uh, uh, content, uh, today we talk about mobile applications. Uh, I evaluate quite a few companies on a weekly basis that come to me uh, utilizing uh, our brand of athletes and uh, entertainers to showcase their wares, uh, to bring brandness, to bring, I'm sorry, to bring uh, brand awareness to their products. And uh, I have yet to see any um, application platform that has the ability to monetize um, content. What is being monetized is the images, uh, the brands uh, of the athletes and entertainers, but utilizing the hardcore fans that follow them. That's being monetized to an extent. But uh, what we have not seen and what I have not seen is a integrated platform where the technology uh, marries the content where you can monetize it. So when uh, Bill says uh, that Tiki and I think that the athletes are the brand that uh, monetizes uh, technology and brings awareness to these uh, integrated platforms that are not here yet. Uh, I believe that's true because uh, as we've seen uh, from a historical standpoint, when it comes to technology being the output uh, to generate revenue, somewhere along the line, there's the athletes, there's the sports, there's the leagues that come into play because that's the really the, the, the generator that drives all this technology. Well, I also think that athletes, for the first time, are being able to control their message. Uh, oftentimes, we, we rely on bloggers, we rely on the beat writers, we rely on the teams, quite frankly, uh, to tell the world what's going on with us. Uh, but new technology, and social media in particular, has given the athlete a voice. Now, some of them, as Bill was alluding to, have used that in, in, in a detrimental way, because once your brand is affected uh, in certain ways, you're never going to have commercial success on the other side. Uh, but at the same time, we haven't realized, as, as you were getting to, Charles, how to capitalize on that. How do we take, uh, you know, for for instance, Larry Fitzgerald's million and a half followers, literally a million and a half people follow one person uh, and, make, and turn that into capital, turn that into money, uh, something that means uh, uh, something down the line. And I think that's evolving. I think that the person that figures that out is going to be the winner. Uh, we also run into uh, the challenge of the leagues, and let's, let's, let's be honest about it. Uh, the leagues want to control that content. They want to control uh, their players. You know, how can, what, what hats can they wear post-game? What can they say uh, uh, about uh, themselves or the league or the games, et cetera, uh, post-game? And, and that's being obliterated to be perfectly honest with you, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, what, what, I, what I think uh, is responsibility of, of guys like myself, of Charles, and other entrepreneurs uh, in, this, in this emerging space are find a way to bring it back to the people who matter and that make these sports go, and that's the athletes themselves. Well, if someone is representing athletes, as, as I've said, you know, that's an opportunity, but it is more a challenge, in my view, than an opportunity right now. I recall the eight to 10 years I worked with Michael Jordan, uh, we grew his brand organically. Really but it was easier then, it was easier then. No, well, it was easier in the sense that you could, for the most part, control what was disseminated informationally. Exactly. Well, well, but, Strick, and, um, I, let me interject for one second because uh, I don't want to take it in another direction, but Michael did come at a time when cable was just hitting oh, the market I, I very strong. I understand that, and my, my point is about the challenges there, it was less of a challenge and more of an opportunity, or less of an opportunity, because now you can control how you initiate your brand, what you say, true. And, we, and we, we're seeing uh, regulations right now and restrictions right now imposed by the leagues. Every major, major sport says, what, 90 minutes before, 90 minutes after, and you have to make yourself available, but you can't tweet, you can't do anything during the games. You've got the IOC did it during this past Olympics in terms of 
um, some of the athletes wanting to acknowledge their sponsors and were unable to do so. You've got it at the NCAA to the point where I think you've got constitutional issues. You've got, as an example, the University of Kentucky and, and University of Louisville monitoring what athletes are saying on their websites and Facebooks and, and this kind of thing based on 400 words that are designed or identified as raising flags if they see these words used in anything they tweet. Uh, you've got some schools now saying if you're an athlete playing for the school, you cannot have a Facebook page. Hmm. So there is that kind of restriction and control, uh, and, but in there lies the challenge, like I said, to try to do it properly. And you know, you have advisors supposedly to help shape your image a lot of times, and I think today it's almost essential, wouldn't you agree? I would absolutely agree because we don't know as athletes, uh, I'm going to group myself with the, my former colleagues, we don't know as athletes how to, how to manage this. We've never been trained on it. There is no playbook. Uh, there is no direction, really, because even for our advisors, uh, uh, a la you, Bill, you, you also don't have a playbook or know how to, how to do it absolutely correctly. Uh, but, that, but I think that's the opportunity. As Charles, I think you were alluding to, Michael Jordan came uh, to, to prominence at the beginning of what was, at the time, a very new technology, which was cable television. Everybody had an opportunity to see Michael Jordan do what he did, and he, and he capitalized on it. Uh, uh, obviously, the message was controlled, uh, but I think that same opportunity exists right this second. Um, and we have to find a way uh, to, 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 to capture it and monetize it in a way that doesn't, you know, to our, uh, 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 as we were introduced, that the leagues don't necessarily always control. Because it's a $9 billion business in the NFL, $9 billion business in the NFL. Every other incremental uh, dollar that comes in probably shouldn't necessarily go directly to the NFL. You know, we, and when you talk about monetizing uh, the images and brands of uh, athletes, uh, pro basketball alumni, we take uh, various uh, uh, former NBA players and we play against national teams around the world. We've been to, uh, just came back from Beijing and we had 11,000 people in the, in the arena. You had Allen Iverson and Jason Williams playing against Stefan Marbury's championship team in Beijing. You had 11,000 people there. But what we do when we travel around, we find that organization in that particular city, uh, country, that actually has the ability to um, deal with us uh, when it comes to social media. Uh, we film everything from the time we land in the country to the time we leave, and it's amazing how many fans globally want that access to see what's going on behind the scenes while we're traveling, and they're willing to spend a dollar ninety-nine, uh, ninety-nine cents for that access. Um, you see that today with uh, Tiki talking about his company, Thuzio. You have an opportunity to get in contact with every athlete um, that you would like to get in contact with for, every, for whatever reason, whatever appearance you would like. And these are the things that are happening when I talk about monetizing brands uh, with uh, individual athletes. That is happening. Uh, when you talk about the NCAA and um, uh, all the sports leagues, that is a big issue that's throughout the courts in the United States right now, and we, no one knows how that's going to end up, but it's a big issue. Who owns the rights? Do I own the rights to, to me as a person uh, when I'm playing for a professional basketball team? Uh, when I leave, do I own my rights? I mean, there's, it's a big issue. Uh, there was no classic sports. Um, up until a few years ago, and now they're repurposing all this content. There's a lot going on in the industry. For the collegiate athletes, they're signing their name, maybe I think it's 16, 17 times before they go into the university, and that last signature says they own the rights to your name and likeness in perpetuity. And we're not paying you. Right, so there's a lot going on out there, and it's all gonna come to the uh, uh, surface, but these are some very exciting times that we're in dealing with mobile applications and the rights of individuals. Uh, the, the one last legal twist in here is is we, we're talking about regulation as to time when you can tweet whatever, but also they've gotten into regulation of content, and that really bothers me as a lawyer is is when they say you cannot say certain things, and I think that's going to have to be settled in the court. I, um, I'll just go to couple of closing comments here before. 
Yes. No, my, my closing I, I, comment I is, is uh, what's going to be interesting, I think, for my company, I think for athletes in general, is how we integrate advertising into this. Obviously, uh, traditional advertising is changing because of the advent of social media and the, and the popularity of it. Um, and so doing interesting things that draw attention, let's call it viral videos, is where advertising is going to start going. And I think we as athletes uh, can take advantage of that in, in massive ways. Shelly, my parting shot is similar to his, but when it comes to, uh, again, mobile applications, Cablevision right now I think is leading the way by giving users access on your mobile devices. They're not monetizing things because when I look at different things and a commercial comes on, I'll put it down. I'm not sitting in an armchair in front of a TV where I have to watch a commercial. So therefore, as that begins to change and we're in a position where the athletes are driving the market or the sports leagues are driving the market and commercial advertising can be the driver to monetize it in a way where uh, we can generate revenue, I think that's when things will begin to change. Thank you. My closing remark is this, uh, in advising athletes and when it comes to the use of social media and some of the missteps we've seen in unfortunate and untimely and otherwise is just use plain common sense. The unfortunate thing is that common sense is not so common. Bill, thank you very much. Charles, Tiki, thank you. Let's give it up for these guys. Outstanding.